This is the Vulpes One rocket. Beautiful. It's the first hobby rocket I've ever made, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. At just over 11 centimeters in length, the Vulpes One is on the small end of hobby rocketry, a reason why Rice Eclipse Rocketry Team designates this and similar rockets as mini rockets. The name is apt, as mini rockets like the Vulpes One only contain half A motors. Hobby rocket motors are designated by total impulse, a measure of force times time, starting with the least total impulse at A and going up to the most at O. The Volpe's motor had a total impulse of 1.1 newton seconds, and it fired for 0.36 seconds, delivering an average force of about 3 newtons. This might not seem like a lot. 3 newtons is the equivalent force of the weight of an 11 ounce or 310 gram object, However, the Vulpes itself only weighs about 15 grams, so all of this force concentrated on such a small object allowed it to blast off into the sky. But how high did it go? Well, that's hard to say. As a small, simple rocket, the Vulpes didn't have any telemetry equipment. The only electronics involved in the project were the long wire and control panel used to launch it. However, knowing the characteristics of the rocket and its motor allows me to make some approximations. This is the force profile of the Volpe's half A motor. Integrating this function with respect to time is where the motor gets its value for total impulse. At the same time, gravity is constantly acting against the upward force of the motor when approximating the trajectory of the rocket as perfectly vertical. This force remains mostly constant, however, the mass of the rocket decreases slightly as spent fuel comes out the back. Finally, air resistance is important to consider in the flight of the Vulpes, because its low mass makes it more easily impacted by drag forces. Drag force is a bit more complex to calculate, but a good approximation comes from multiplying the rocket's cross-section by the density of the air and by the velocity squared. This is an intuitive calculation, because a larger cross-section would logically result in more drag, a denser medium, like if the Vulpes were moving through water instead of air, would result in more drag, and a higher velocity would increase both the amount of air that the rocket runs into and the speed at which that air impacts it, leading to the squaring of the velocity term. When dimensional analysis is considered for this approximation, the units are sensible for force. With a 14 mm diameter and a 150 square millimeter cross section, the drag force on the Volpes can be approximated at standard temperature and pressure. Combining the impact of these forces on the varying mass of the Volpes gives an approximation of 82 meters after 3.4 seconds. This is essentially apogee as the rocket has an upward velocity of 2 meters per second at this point in the model. However, it also corresponds to the timing of an important event in the Volpes mission its separation event. All of the design features that made the Vulpes aerodynamic while flying up would also make it aerodynamic while falling down, which would lead to a sharp impact that would bury it in the ground or potentially cause it to hit someone. Thus, separation is designed to slow the descent of the Vulpes by splitting it into two pieces, the nose cone and the body tube. The body tube is made of cardboard attached to small plastic fins, so it is very lightweight. After separation, it naturally has a low terminal velocity, so it can tumble down safely. The nose cone, on the other hand, is a solid piece of plastic that has been engineered to be aerodynamic. It needs the help of a streamer to increase the drag forces on it and decrease its terminal velocity. Separation was triggered three seconds after the motor finished its fuel using a small explosive charge built into the motor. This small explosion was enough to push the nose cone and its streamer out of its friction fit with the body tube. Then, both halves of the rocket safely returned to the Earth. At what speed did both pieces hit the ground? This can also be calculated with the simple model of drag, but calculating the cross-sectional areas of the tube as it tumbles down or the nose cone with its streamer is quite difficult. On the other hand, the footage of the launch and landings can provide a fair estimate if we approximate these objects as being dropped from rest at 82 meters and maintaining a constant drag profile on their way down. After separation, it took the body tube 9.5 seconds to reach the ground and the nose cone 18.2 seconds. Based on this estimate, the body tube hit the ground at 9.2 meters per second, or 21 miles an hour, and the nose cone hit the ground at 4.6 meters per second, or 10 miles an hour. 
both gentle enough speeds to leave the two pieces of the Vulpes intact for a successful recovery. Launching the Vulpes 1 was incredibly fun. I'm glad that the mission went smoothly and achieved all of its objectives. With the recovery of the rocket, I will always have this souvenir of my first hobby rocket launch, even as I go on to help build larger hobby rockets with Rice Eclipse throughout the year. As a bonus before the end of the video, check out the launch of a rocket with a slightly more powerful full A motor. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about hobby rocketry. Whether you're interested in physics, engineering, astronomy, or some other field of science, I would highly recommend getting involved with hobby rocketry for its fascinating and challenging aspects. Applying the laws of physics and important design principles, humans can accomplish great things. After all, these rockets are scaled-down versions of the very machines that can take us to space.